I believe in miracles. Exactly what I'm going to say. <laughs> so you might just as well say it with me. I believe in miracles. And I feel so sorry for the person who does not believe in miracles. Because sooner or later, there'll come a time in each of our lives when we're going to need God to perform that miracle. And we believe in miracles because we believe in God. My guest is a very exciting person. He's one of those four businessmen from Washington, D.C., who has had that wonderful experience of being born again, whose life has been completely changed by the power of God. You'll just enjoy the next 30 minutes so very much, and so don't go away. Ray Bates, I consider you the perfect example of the mercy of the Lord Jesus Christ. Paul knew what he was talking about. Oh, that great apostle of Paul, when he said, the mercy and the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. Who can fathom it? And the love of God, and who can fathom it? <laughs> and you are an example of what the love of God will do with a man. You are an example, Ray Bates of the mercy of the Lord Jesus Christ because you're the most unlikely person I think I've ever met. <laughs> yes. Hallelujah. You know, for the Lord to take and completely change your life. And it's been a complete change, a marvelous change. Dynamic. I know. What was your life prior to this wonderful experience of being born again? Well, I, I think um, in the contemporary Christian idiom, I would be the deepest kind of sinner. I did, <laughs> I did everything. I was a sort of a world traveler. I'd been every place, done everything. I had affluence, uh, um, had a big farm, and, and all the animals. I had a pig named Blossom and a, and a goat named Newby. I, you know, I, I had a really the, the good life uh, by ratio to, the, to what the normal person would think. I think everybody would have envied me. But I found out one thing when I was in Washington and inquired about you. Most of the folk in Washington, D.C., you know, when it comes to the society of Washington, they know about Ray Bates. Yes. Why do they know you so well over there? Well, I'm, I've been in business for myself for 25 years. An and interior uh, decorator. Uh, designer, yes. Uh, and we... you did the uh, interior decorating for the... Palace at Nicaragua? Yes. What else? <clears throat> For Luis Mose, and I, I did a, a numerous hotels, motels. Uh, the most famous restaurant I've done was a jockey club in Washington and, and Circle One and Harvey's and, and uh, a very famous place called Billy Martin's Carriage House. Uh, I did part of that. And, but you uh, did more than interior decorating. Oh, yes. We're, <laughs> we're, we're designers. Um, uh, we've, we've become broad in our scope uh, as, as the years went by. And uh, uh, I, I, I was flying, you know, really quite far up there. And I, I now know uh, unequivocally that as high as I was, that's how really low I was by comparison to now. The Lord Jesus Christ is really the only way. Hallelujah. Yes, Were you satisfied with that kind of life? 
Or was well, there still a seeking for more and something else? Well, did you I, know there I was more? I had a hunger, but I didn't know there was that more. And I didn't, if I had known there was more, I didn't know where to find it, you see. And then a, 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 a book by a very remote character named Catherine Kuhlman came to me in, oh, in, the, in the mail. and uh, I've heard about her. Yeah. <laughs> she, <laughs> How did you she, ever... She does something. I can't remember what it is. <laughs> but anyway, but I, I have a little inside information yeah. for you. She doesn't do it. I know. But I know. I'll tell you, she has three persons behind her. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Know, and they do it. How'd you happen to get that book? Well, I, I was a do-gooder type. I had, you know, uh, affluence. And so if somebody uh, uh, came in the mail, uh, like I was taking guideposts, which had been sent to me by someone. And, uh, and this was advertised, I believe, in guidepost. And so I just sent two dollars and eighty-eight cents, or whatever it was, and uh, the book arrived. And very honestly, the the devil did not want me to read that book because uh, at first I looked at the name and God can do it again instead of God is doing it, or whatever you know, whatever I had in my mind at that time. And and the jacket didn't appeal to me, and I and you I put I, it I, aside. I put it aside, and then in, in God's perfect timing, he had me pick up the book one evening and. I, I read this account by, was it Jamie Buckingham? Yes. yes. And uh, it was just phenomenal to hear of a very sophisticated writer crying joyous tears, seeing miraculous healings. And that wasn't and, the sort of reading material you'd been used no, to, right? No, it really wasn't. And uh, when, when I finished reading his account, I just felt that it was absolutely impossible that this could be going on. And a man as well-known and well-read and well-everything as I was, could not know about it. I just did not because you see how you, I could not you, know you about it. You knew everything that there was to know. I thought you had I, tried I, everything I, that I, there was I, I to I do. But I really thought I knew. But, but the channel of God is so wide open yeah. uh, that, that we, we just don't see it. You know, we, 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 we don't even try to swim across it, you see. And, uh, it, 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 how were you affected as you read it? Did you put it down? Did you read just a no, part of it and put no, it down? No, 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 no. I sure didn't. I, I read this thing. Uh, tears welled up in me. I thought this is just so phenomenal. I read straight through the book. And uh, I didn't put it down. Where were you? In your home? In my home. Uh, and <clears throat> I, I uh, was so impressed that I immediately ordered 30 copies, a typical Ray Bates of the time. And, and uh, I sent one to everyone. Well, I could think of who had a headache or a, a finger, <laughs> really? fingernail, fingernail problem, anything. And then uh, didn't you have one of your uh, employees? Or, oh, yes, that was so... Tell cute. me oh. about that young 16-year-old girl. Oh, she was... Was so, she in your employee? Yeah, she wasn't 16, Catherine. She was 20, but she was just all hung up. She was uh, on dope, and she was on... Uh, she was drinking the better part of a fifth of booze a day, and... And uh, she was really, um, her morals were just <laughs> really quite low by a, a new standard. And uh, she was so emotionally hung up. She had a, a complex uh, that was all intermingled with her family and, and fatherhood. And she needed, she needed desperately Did something. you know that she had gone to Pittsburgh? Uh, when I sent her the book, I, I gave her one of the book. And <clears throat> she was working for me. And I gave her the book. And uh, she was just struck to the heart, you see. And she went instantaneously to Pittsburgh on the next available transportation when she knew that you were having a meeting. And uh, she, was, uh, she was that by the Holy Spirit. And she came back immediately from the thing and told my wife and I about it. And I'd now read the book, and I had seen a few things, but I still had not given my life to the Lord. And I, I, I just knew I had to go to Pittsburgh and see for myself. After the, the thing that had happened to her. Yeah. You saw reality in her life. Yeah, right. I and saw did, it and I still wanted to see more of it. Though. Did you know that um, it was right in the middle of a miracle service, a Friday morning in the First Presbyterian Church in Pittsburgh, when this young girl who was in your employee came walking down the main aisle of the sanctuary of the First Presbyterian Church, a perfect stranger to me. And she just walked up while all of these healings were taking place, and she just looked me in the face and said, 
do you think Jesus will forgive my sins? And I remember how she cried. She laid her head on my shoulder and, and, and just wept. So and I remember putting my arms around her, and I said, why, of course. And then she began telling me some of her sins. She said, do you think Jesus will forgive me? It was all so new to her. I didn't know her. I didn't know the story behind the story. She was instantly born again. Hallelujah. This is so fantastic. And she went back to Washington, D.C., evidently, mm -hmm. and told you, and you had not yet been converted. No, I had not. But you saw the change in her life. How I was she changed? saw the change instantly. I, uh, it's an unidentifiable thing. Uh, sure. Now, uh, now I see how things are identified. I can almost tell you uh, that someone is a Christian just by a kind of light that they have, you see. And you saw and, it. And, and I saw it. And, and then did that and, make and you want to see calm, more? I saw a calm that she never had before, you see, and an assurance that she never had before. She was always hung up, and, and she was just so beautiful and, and, and so marvelous. And I thought, oh, I just got to go. I got to go. And I went, and I did. I had a Jamie Buckingham experience, except I didn't sit on stage with you. Uh, I did cry for the whole hour and a half, and I. Did you fly to Pittsburgh? Uh, no, I drove. I, I drove to Pittsburgh, and uh, and uh, the Lord does things the right way. I, I, always. I, uh, always, and He always yeah, does uh, a complete and perfect job. Oh, always, uh, Ray always. Bates. Fantastic. It, oh, sure, it is, right. and He knows exactly what He's doing. Yeah, right. And his timing is always perfect. Got, I just must tell you something. I, you know, the, the, the thing that really shocked me was uh, Jerry, that was her name, and she uh, said, you must get there at 7 o'clock in the morning. I said, but that service doesn't start until 11. Why should you get there? She said, well, you won't get in if you don't. So I said, oh, you know, I just don't believe it. <laughs> so I got there at 7.30, and there was this mob of people. You know, if there were, it had been a, a riot and a fire it combined, I'd never seen that many people. So I thought, wow. And, and the, 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 oh, the, I have so much to share with you, honey. Hello, will you? Uh, but anyway. I know. <sighs> what a blessing I got that day. And the Lord uh, used that service to begin a whole new thing, that was the woven pattern that came out of that funny book that I put aside. God it's, can uh, do it again. Hallelujah. And he did <laughs> it for you. He did it. He really did. And a dynamic Well, life. sitting there in the First Presbyterian Church in Pittsburgh, was there any sensation? What well, was your experience? Well, well my first, ex uh, my first uh, impression was one of, uh, of simple awe that 5,000 people could come someplace for this experience it See, the, 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 the strange thing about your book is it's chronicled and it shows, let's say, 10 or 12 or 20, I don't know how many people. And so 20 people over how many years is a very small amount. And so I came prepared to see, you know, some healing, but I didn't come prepared to see that many and, and that dynamic. The, the one that most impressed me was a woman who was, oh, she was 20 years in a wheelchair and she could only move her head. It was the only thing she could move five degrees each way. And she got up out of the chair and she raised her hands over her head and bent down and touched her toes. And man, <laughs> that did it to me. <laughs> I was just nothing but a great ball of sobbing mess. <laughs> it really was fantastic. Uh, but uh, then the, uh, when I left the service and I came back to Washington, the young girl was giving her testimony to the church on the following Sunday. And You're employed. Uh, yeah. And uh, I, I went, and I, I heard I heard a different human being. I had never I never heard that girl speak before. So here she was before an audience of three, four hundred people, I guess, five hundred, I don't know, and just as calm and assured, and and just breathtakingly beautiful, standing up there just telling her how she had this experience. And so um, I was I, I was just done in, <laughs> really was. And and the minister approached me. Um, after the service, and asked me who I was, and I, and we began talking, and I told him that I had had this fantastic experience of going to Pittsburgh and, and attending your meeting, and she said, he said, oh, I know Catherine very well, and I've been trying to get her to come to Washington and have a healing ministry there. I said, oh, no, you mustn't do that. You, you must do that yourself. And he became quite shy, you see. And, and 
he, he was like caught up in this, but he didn't know what to do. He, he didn't know what to, do, to, to run for the, for the back or what. But anyway, uh, I knew I had no authority to say that. And I knew I said it, but I didn't feel like I said it. If you understand what I'm saying. And uh, then the outcome of that was I wrote a letter the following day to him to confirm. I didn't know that the Lord confirms things, but I wrote the letter to confirm it. And uh, he <coughs> received the letter on Tuesday, and on Wednesday a young minister walked into his office and said, my name is Chuck Motley, and I, I'm from Norfolk, Virginia, and the Lord spoke to my heart and said I should come to Washington, D.C. and start a healing ministry in a place called Christ Church. And um, I looked at the telephone book, and there are 50 Christ Churches, and I wonder if this happens to be the one. <laughs> so the minister practically fell under the desk, and it was pretty fantastic. And there started a healing ministry, and uh, the following Sunday I gave my life to the Lord. You didn't and expect so many things to happen oh, so, so like, like quickly. That. How has this wonderful experience changed your whole life? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> have, you, have you got another seven hours? <laughs> <laughs> no. Now, that is true. Yeah, there's true. no, yeah. when it begins, mm -hmm. there's no end. It's just phenomenal. The Lord sends people to us. We, we see dynamic healings. We're, we're, we're used in so many ways. But how about your own life, the change in your own life? Oh, I mean, that's just a complete turnaround. Uh, Are you um, literally a new person in Christ Jesus? Absolutely. Absolutely. In I what way? In, 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 in every way. I, my, my, my social life is different and, and so much finer. What has happened to your friends? Um, most of them have gone off this way, but, I, but everyone that's gone that away, there's been... How about your social drinking? More coming this way. Beg your pardon? How about your social drinking? Oh, my goodness. That was, the most, that, that was one of the most phenomenal things, the drinking and the smoking. I owned a saloon at the time. And uh, I, I had this experience on a Sunday, and Monday I went in, and uh, the bartender says, Mr. Bates, you want the usual? And I usually would have had a scotch and soda. And I said, no, I'm, I'm not thirsty. I, I'm not, I don't want to drink. I feel thirsty, and I think I'd like to have a Coke. And so I'd, I had every intention after the Coke of having a drink. You owned never drank again. the place. Yeah. You were converted on Sunday. Monday walked in. And the bartender said, the usual Mr. Bates, he wasn't dealing with Same the man. man that he had dealt with on Saturday. Oh, he had not. You mean that, that was the end? That was the end. And, and a, uh, a couple of months later, I, I, I have now learned that we can indeed lay everything on Jesus Christ, who will just, right. just take it away. I, we, we threw our cigarettes out the window, and I said, Lord, I don't really have the strength in myself to stop smoking. So you're going to have to stop smoking for me. Hallelujah. And he did. I mean, never simple. smoked like that. That's simple. And, and, and my, my son said, oh, uh, Dad, you've got to stop smoking. I said, i got a $5,000 wardrobe. And every time I've ever tried to stop in the past, I've gained so much weight. And, and, and this time I gained three pounds. <laughs> uh, and, you know, it's, it's the Lord. You know, he has something else. Praise his precious name. All on earth that we have to do is to just be willing. Do you know the prayer that you prayed when you came and asked Jesus to forgive your sins? It was a simple prayer because you didn't know how to pray. Didn't know how what to did you say to him? Well, it's, it, it, it's the miracle of God to, when you say just simply, Lord, I am a sinner. Yeah. And I wish to yeah. repent of my sins and turn back toward you. And I want you to come into my heart and be my own personal Lord and Savior. And that, that's it. Hello. <laughs> yeah. Is that Fantastic. simple? That's simple. If we could only get men and women to understand how simple it is. If you could only understand. Sitting here, here's a businessman from Washington, D.C., who would give anything in the world. He would give his life. If he could stand on the highest mountaintop right now and let the whole world know that the same experience that happened to him can be yours. If only you'd come to him in just the simple way that he came to him. It isn't some hard thing. You too, just now, you're just as hungry for this peace of mind and peace of soul as this businessman was. 
You're hungry for something that'll satisfy. And the only way that you'll ever get peace of mind is when Jesus Christ himself gives you that peace of mind. You can only have that wonderful experience in the Lord Christ Jesus if you just look up and say, here I am. I'm a sinner. And the only person whose sins he cannot forgive is the man or the woman who will not confess he's a sinner. Confess him. Confess your needs to him. Oh, the mercy of the Lord Jesus Christ. His mercy. Not a man, not a woman can say they merit the forgiveness of sins. It's his mercy, his great compassion, if you only knew. No person is too great a sinner. And the love of God, who can fathom the love of God? But he loves you as a person enough to hear the cry of your heart and the blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, this very moment will forgive you of your sins and you too can become a new creature in Christ Jesus. It is the greatest miracle a human being can know. Believe me, the transformation of a life, a person becoming a new creature in Christ Jesus is the greatest miracle in the world. Hear the cry of that heart. Give that one that 